Here's a quick review of things to consider when someone comes into care and she's had a previous history of preterm birth or antecedent of preterm birth. So the preterm birth rate in Angava is a bit higher than down south in Montreal. And we want to try to reduce that by doing everything that we can do incorporating into our care. Some things that, um, you know, are just part of the woman's life. It's something we can't do anything about. But if there's things that we can try to do to help reduce her risk of preterm birth, it is definitely better off for her baby. Um, so for women um, who who you identify have a um, have had a preterm birth, you want to find out what was the reason for the preterm birth. So was it because she was induced because of fetal or maternal health concerns? Uh, those things may or may not repeat themselves this time. Was it that her membranes ruptured prior to delivery? Did she maybe have an untreated case of chlamydia? Was there trauma? So was she in a four-wheel accident, for example? Or are we starting to su suspect cervical incom incompetence? Like each time it's getting earlier and earlier that she's delivering. So first of all, to plan your labs, you'd of course want to do a thyroid, a TSH, and you're looking for subclinical or clinical hypo or hyperthyroidism. You want to assess her for anemia. Um, so because if she delivers again early, you want to give her and the baby the best chance to have the best iron stores available or that are possible. Also do a vaginal swab, and we're looking for bacterial vaginosis. And the idea is to treat if the woman's positive, given her history of preterm birth. Um, for a woman who has had chlamydia or gonorrhea, for example, she's at high risk of contracting during the pregnancy. She's had a case recently. We can recommend monthly screening um, in order to catch it sooner and treat it soon. And then also we can do um, urine screening tests, so a culture and sensitivity for urine. And the idea with that is for women with a history of preterm birth, we could screen their urine each trimester, so for second and third trimester because of her history. But also if she ever does have a urinary tract infection during the pregnancy, we'd recommend monthly screening. And for some women who just can't shake a urinary tract infection, it seems like it never really gets properly treated, she keeps or she keeps getting reinfected. Um, you can also do a consult, and she could uh, be offered continuous antibiotics or post-sex prophylaxis or antibiotics. Um, and that's in you can read that in SOGC, and she'd stop at thirty week, thirty six weeks pregnancy. So. Um, a urinary tract infection, we're trying to avoid any sort of infection taking hold in the, in the bladder and then possibly quickly blowing up into her kidneys, contributing to her risk of preterm birth. For an ultrasound, you want to try to include a dating ultrasound, and this ensures that we have the most accurate dates possible. So if she does deliver again preterm, we know that we're dealing with, say, a 34-weeker, and there's no question that could be 32 weeks, for example. Also on the morphology, write on the requisition that you request a transvaginal ultrasound and that's gonna measure cervical length. So it's very reassuring if it's greater than 30 um, millimeters. And it says after 24 weeks, I, I think that's right. But um, you know, if there's any sort of doubt, order another ultrasound the next month. Um, something like I'll talk a bit in a sec, but something like cervical cerclage, you really want to kind of a, get her, um, if she if she's interested in having cervical cerclage, 24 is the borderline of, of doing it. 25, you know, is considered rescue. Um, so to, to organize cervical cerclage earlier than later. Um, we offer Prometrium, so that's a consultation with a doctor. So a woman with a previous birth of less than 34 weeks, uh, we don't know what her cervix is doing yet because perhaps she hasn't had a 20-week ultrasound, but she, at 16 weeks, she could be starting Prometrium, uh, have a transvaginal ultrasound later at the 20-week mark. Um, as well, let me just check. And then in terms of women who do have a short cervix without a history of preterm birth, 
that could be a, a reason to offer Prometrium as well. Often though, unless you write on the requisition, she will not be having a transvaginal ultrasound at 20 weeks. Um, cerclage is done generally 24 weeks or less, and it's for women with a suspected, with a history of cervical incompetence. Uh, and that would be a consult, of course, and that's done in Montreal. Um, they could remain back in Kujuak, uh, provided the team feels comfortable. Just ensure that you know where the knot is. It's usually like at one o'clock of the cervix in the case that she does go into labor and the cerclage has to be removed. Um, and you consider metformin if she has a BMI over 35. And that the idea there is it reduces the risk of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a maternal condition that could result in early delivery. In terms of social support, ensure the woman has CSST. Uh, depending on what's going on, make sure she's set up with coupons, um, discussing diet, uh, reducing smoking, reducing THC, of course, alcohol, and then discuss around conjugal violence. So those are all things that we can involve the SIP worker with. Um, you can also make a case to the SIP worker that this woman could benefit from double coupons. In terms of ongoing prenatal care, something I always forget is in terms of referring for dental care. So dental disease or gum disease is, is associated with preterm birth and give her some education around signs and symptoms of contractions uh, and what those look like and how they differentiate between Braxton Hicks. So one thing that often happens with preterm birth is there's a lot of denial at first by the woman. and She doesn't believe she's actually going into labor. So just to give her some tips on how to test the labor. So if she's noticing some contractions, she thinks there might be a pattern to them and she lays down and rests and they still keep coming, say, every eight minutes, then that's considered an indication to have a checkup. In terms of with Braxton Hicks, usually it's often in response to the baby moving, her moving, or it happens spontaneously, but when she kind of lays down to rest, they go away. You also want to do everything to facilitate routine prenatal care. Like you want to be flexible. You want to do home visits if she's unable to come in. And you want to re recommend all the additional screening, like I mentioned. So perhaps a urine screening each trimester, clam gono each trimester, BV each trimester. And screen early for group B strep and repeat four weeks later if she still hasn't had a baby. So say she gave birth at 36 weeks last time, make sure you have a GBS swab on file by 32 weeks, 33 weeks, because she might be going to labor around 34. Make sure you know if the baby's head down. So we get a bit habituated to just assuming the baby's vertex, but when the baby's preterm, it's higher risk that the baby's breech. So if you identify that she still breached at 34 weeks, last time she gave birth at 36 weeks, just keep that in mind if she goes into labor again um, early that you might be also dealing with a breach delivery. And another option that we offer is you consider sending the woman south. So if she had an extremely, a, like quite a preterm birth previously, she may opt to be down south in Montreal and come back at 36 weeks, um, you know, if she hasn't had her baby yet. And so that way she's closer to care um, if she were to have her baby preterm again. And then one last comment. This is crossed out, but it may come in soon. So um, I had made a mistake interpreting this SOGC guideline. And so... Aspirin is not indicated in the case of history of preterm birth. Uh, it is indicated when the woman has a history of preeclampsia. However, keep in mind that, or, or just keep an eye out for this, there might be a new recommendation that um, aspirin is indicated starting before 16 weeks until 36 weeks if the woman has a history of preterm birth. That could be new recommendations in a year or so.